Okay, now we're moving on to uh, purchase of replacement vehicles for DPW. I assume DPW has been like they sufficiently entertained and now, now they want to come and participate, right? <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> you don't need to or you don't want to. I mean, maybe it's maybe not worthy of that. <laughs> Okay, do we have a motion on this one, Mr. Branch, to take I'll you make a second motion. by Mr. DeLuca? You got that, Barbara? Mm -hmm. Any discussion or questions on this I, Warren article, which like is on your screen? Public. What was that, Virginia? No, if he has a question, I'll yield to Mr. Walker. Did you want to have them present first? Right, do you have a question, Mr. Uh, Walker? Uh, well, statement? no, a, a statement. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think we're going down the wrong road. I, I actually am for this, but I'm not for <laughs> the way it's written. I think taking this, all this stuff on the unassigned fund balance is getting out of control. And I think if the voters really want it, budget it and add it to the taxes. Um, I, I'm not going to be for this the way it's written right now. Any other questions or comments, Mr. Morrow? I think this is repeats of what I was bringing up last week, is the fact that I'm not necessarily against this, but I'm against the fact that this is no tax impact and we we're going to right. look Got to it. somebody to make it clearer for the Got it. people because we oh, stop shaking your head up. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'll do it this way. Then. <laughs> <laughs> no. It looks smart at doing it that way. <laughs> so anyway. You're a lateral bobblehead. <laughs> I assume, or hopefully, within the next year, the wording could be more explanative and exactly what this is because it is a tax in all of these things not this article I'll just say that, that they're an impact because it either came from prior taxes but once the slush funds get worked down taxpayers have to redo the flush fund so it's not free everything <laughs> saying these words just stop taking it out of that fund that's what I'm saying it's a bad Hold fund Mr. LeBranch I watched taxes. your presentation to the selectmen my understanding is that the one ton dump truck is basically decommissioned. Um, and the two three quarter ton trucks with plows have rusted frames. And the two sidewalk maintenance vehicles, um, you can't, they're, they're a machine that both of them, uh, there's a lot of expense and and they're not made anymore, that particular model or something like that. And if I'm, and correct me if I'm wrong, the idea is to get a vehicle like a, the two, two would be like uh, bobcats that would have a snowblower attachment on the front and then they could be used off season to uh, put a, do other things. Does that sound about right? It does. Can I handle it one vehicle at a time? Uh, go please, I'm okay. just doing the, overview please go yeah, ahead you, unit 16 is one of the pick three quarter ton pickup trucks that we have it was uh, it's a 2004 its original original cost was 18,000 the last time the board uh, met I thought there was some questions as to what the maintenance has been on, on a vehicle like that why do we want to replace it um, we've spent since 2004 $27,481 re repairing and maintaining an $18,000 vehicle. Or in other words, we spent 152,000, 152% of its original purchase price maintaining it. I don't, from a fiscal uh, perspective, I don't think that's a wise thing for the department to continue with, period. Um, unit 26, original, that is another three quarter ton pickup truck, but one that we actually use for plowing, so it's a little heavier. Um, we've spent a total since 2005 uh, $12,299 repairing that particular vehicle or half of its original purchase price. Um, yes, both of these are suffering um, frame issues, um, but we're also seeing a huge uptick, particularly in this 26, just this last year alone, it was $6,000 to, to repair these vehicles. So. Um, I've always felt that there's a certain curve, if you will, and when a vehicle starts to really uh, cost the town a lot more money to maintain and keep on the road than it's, than it's worth or what it was originally worth, it's time to look at replacing that, that vehicle or 
Um, and the other vehicle that you talked about, the one-ton truck, um, the frame is rotted out on that. I have a deadline that it was uh, somewhere around a $6,000 increase, but we're way up uh, in uh, the service fees. I didn't particularly do a breakdown of that one. I was more interested in the pickup trucks based upon what I had seen or heard from uh, watching the previous presentation. Um, you then mentioned Unit 53, and I do have something on that. I think I used a case of paper today, but um, Unit 53 is one of the department's articulated sidewalk plows. Last year it needed repairs during February 18 in the snow clearing season. The parts were expensive and it took months to arrive. Last year the department spent $9,284 for parts that took from February to June to get there. So the, my point is if I can't get the parts for it anymore, it's, it's no better than a boat anchor. Mm -hmm. um, our mechanic uh, did do a spreadsheet. Um, our total cost repairing that particular vehicle is $13,034. My concern with those particular vehicles is they cost the town about $120,000 to replace, and they're only used for a very limited time uh, of the year for one particular task, and that is sidewalks. I also feel that they can no longer be relied upon because the local dealer no longer maintains a sufficient inventory of parts to get them back on the road when needed. My opinion is based upon the February to June supply uh, time we experienced last year. I also feel that for $120,000 the equipment is overpriced when you compare it to the cost of a new Max six-wheel dump truck at only $122,000. I can do a lot more with a Mack dump truck than I can with that articulated plow. So repeatedly, uh, one of the selectmen, a former member of your budget committee, uh, using the term rolling stock, has always you know, challenged me to look at the viability and the number of pieces of equipment that we have. And those particularly articulated plows, I think their time has come. <coughs> Anything else, Ms. LeBranch? Thank you very much. Thank you. Chris, you saw our and Jeff are welcome. You saw the uh, video snippet and saw the video from our last meeting. Yes, we did. Do yeah. you want to make any comments on anything we have to say relative to this warrant? No. Okay. No. Just, I Jennifer, just want to same tonight same. for brevity answer the questions that you have. Great. All right. Uh, one meeting, please. Uh, are we having any other questions or statements? Mr. Ladd. It seems to me the tension is not that you need the equipment. It's the mechanism of funding to pay for right. that equipment. Uh, and that I have no, uh, right. it's not my choice. No, I understand that. We have no choice but to replace the equipment. We have a savings account which is in place to be used when appropriate to maintain what the town must maintain. So we can either keep that 243 in the unres unreserved fund balance, which is really surplus in the town, and have inappropriate broken equipment, which is expensive to repair, or we can buy the equipment we need and be grateful that we're taking it out of a savings account and not adding to the tax rate. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Walker. First of all, Mr. Ladd, it's not a savings account. This is unheard of in the history of Hampton. We, we hear people at the meetings say we're going to increase the UFB and then we turn around and double-edged sword we're just picking and choosing all these projects to draw money out of it. That's not giving the taxpayers a choice and I feel bad for the director and deputy because th that's just like saying well let's just fund it whatever we want. This is money that he for 50 years in this town and you and others have already paid and the bottom line is if people are for this warrant article, then put it out there and add it to what it's supposed to be the way it should be, and it's getting out of hand. And, you know, most recently, if, if anybody read the article by Norman Silverdick on December 14th, he was absolutely right on. And I'm telling you, we're getting to the point in this town, you know, this $7 million could then all of a sudden be $4 million. So where does it stop? Do we say at 60000 And we're going to have the same problem with the MIS. Hold on a second. Well, th that ridiculous 70000 that we're going to do, un undesignated fund balance for that, it's just out of control. I feel bad for Jen and Chris because I'm for this, but I am not for it the way it's funding. And we've got to start somewhere because this is just crazy. 
I could okay. disagree I'm with you. Glad you don't have the floor, Regina. Yes. I'm quite aware of the way things have done with the unassigned fund balance in the past years. I'm also aware that it was down to zero for a very long time. You can call it whatever you want, unassigned fund balance, surplus, savings. But what it is is it's collateral, cash collateral, that the town has access to if they need to. For years, we've offset the tax rate at the end of the year. Finance director comes in, explains what we have in the assigned balance unassigned fund balance, it's been reviewed by the auditors, and the norm, I guess, or the thing that seemed to happen all the time was we took a certain amount from there and we used it to offset the tax rate. This is doing the same thing, the way I look at it, okay? It's doing, it's gonna get public works equipment that they're in dire need of. I understand how it says no tax impact. Legally, I'm not sure if we could change that to say no current tax impact. There's always a tax impact. The taxpayer always pays, no matter what. How it's worded, doesn't matter. It always comes from the taxpayer. We're the town of Hampton, therefore everything's gonna come from the town of Hampton taxpayer. We can either add the tax on as an additional tax, or we can use money that we have been able to set aside and save up for one, either in generally offsetting the tax rate, which the way I look at it is I'd rather use that million dollars instead of giving it back to the town of Hampton taxpayer, use it to accomplish things to get right. projects done. Mm -hmm. This was my idea. The town manager presented the warrant article coming from, you know, raising new money for taxes and appropriation for new taxes. Public Works is spending at least tens of thousands of dollars on maintenance a year for these vehicles that, much like our town software, doesn't have support for anymore. So using that excess money, yeah, we don't, we don't want to use much of it, which is why we didn't just blindly take an amount and offset the tax rate. Instead of doing that, we're doing this. We have a couple other small projects finishing off the doors of the town hall, and I can't think of the other things offhand, all the turnout gear for the fire department, very important. Same thing with public works. This is very important. It may not be a life-threatening situation, but if a public works department doesn't have the vehicles to get the roads cleared, then guess what? Nothing in the town's gonna get done. And if public works can't function for one hour, the town of Hampton shuts down. So that's why I made the motion, and I believe that's why my board agreed to unanimously approve it to go this way. Okay, anyone else who has not spoken on this wish to speak on this? Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you. You mentioned one of the sidewalk plows is down. Is the other one functioning now? Currently all three are up and functional. Oh yeah, all three. Currently. Today. Uh, this proposal says to purchase two. Right. <coughs> this, let me say that this was brought up probably 20 years ago to go to a skid steer type unit. Yep. And there was a million reasons why it would work. I don't know why. I'm not going to say who it was or anything else. It's just, mm -hmm. it was going down the wrong road. Now we're in a position where these things aren't reliable and parts availability makes them not valuable to have. I would suggest if you're gonna go to something different, <coughs> that you ask for one the first time around and that you be very careful in what you select. Mm -hmm so that we don't end up with another over $100,000 oops that down the road, four, five years, six years later, junk. Right. We don't want to go there. I would agree. So I, I, by lumping this stuff all together in this warrant article, it's how, it, you can't pick and choose. Right. It goes by the wording. My position is that you, you need the two pickup trucks, you, and you need the one ton. Now you've you've put us in a position, or, or management has put us in a position where we either are in favor of this, 
but we're not in favor of it. <coughs> and then the issue of the undesignated fund balance comes into it, how are we going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to see this. Can I make a comment on that, but to that point, and it's a lot of the times where, and I think Jason mentioned it in one of his things about what is the timeline. Um, when you look at when this expires, it is 20... Um, 20. So there is a full year. Unlike the uh, trash vehicles or the six wheelers, the lead time on these vehicles are not as extensive. So when you're looking at a new vehicle purchase, just because it says two, it doesn't mean we have to buy two on day one. We can get pricing because we might get a better deal for two. We may reserve some rights, but it affords us the option to look into perhaps that we have scenarios around town, which we obviously do. We need two different types of machine. One is going to work better up around the school area, and one's going to work better downtown. But it replaces two machines that are currently well not valuable when, and causing us quite significant I agree with issues. What you said, and that's part of why I said what I did. But this doesn't separate that out. This says there it is. Take it or leave it. Once if I, we, if I had my druthers, because of these. These two are sidewalk tractors, and when they predominantly go out, they start at the schools and work yeah, their way out. Yeah, yeah. And knowing how school budgets looked at very favorably, I'd really love to tack them onto the school's budget, to be honest with you. But, well, it, 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 but I understand that it's my, but my, my point in making that, that changing too, by the way. my point in making that uh, point is that the two, the trucks are for the roads. These right. are for the sidewalks. Right. And While we're out plowing, I mean, we're always conscious of, okay, we've got five hours till school opens or I whatever know. it is. I know. And we literally pull people off the street to put them in this to make sure that the sidewalks are safe. Uh, at least, you know, from the core of this, we have a core root of... Yeah, from the center out. Right. Yeah. So Absolutely. I, I mean, and time doesn't that's always... That's probably a valid point that maybe in the future when we look at these, we try and break them into more manageable chunks, if you will. So you started out saying if you had your druthers, and your druthers being the sidewalk maintenance vehicles being a separate warrant article, is that what you're saying? Ma that when we look in the future for warrant articles, that we start to, with what Mr. Pluff said, look at categorizing them better. Right. But right now, these are all necessary in this current year. Exactly. I.e. the three this trucks that are rusted or dead or are really costing the, the taxpayers a lot of money. I don't know of any taxpayer that would look at these maintenance bills for these trucks and literally, if they were in their own yard, and continue. They'd have been long gone. And the same thing is if you had a vehicle in your yard and you couldn't, it might be the best Ferrari in the world, but if you can't get a, it was a drive shaft for one of these. If you can't get the drive shaft, she don't go. And that's what we're dealing with. Are you all set, Mr. Puff? Uh, I said what I wanted to say. No. And you're spot on. You're all set. Just Mr. Frank. Yeah, oh. just for clarification purposes, yep. okay, because my worthy <laughs> constituent to the right of me had valid points. Glad you said worthy. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. The constituent <laughs> is right. This vehicle that you're using to clear the sidewalks does not belong to the school department, correct? Correct. correct. It does and not. it will use to clear other sidewalks in town, correct? Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Mr. Warburton. Is there still time to separate these out into another water or not? Well, that they need so. to be. I mean, where they, they're needed now, I, I just, I don't see... No, no, to Mike's point, what I was saying, we're trying to help it here. Brian, Brian, the answer to your question is yes. The selectmen have the opportunity... Oh, that's what I, I wanted was an answer, yeah. Yeah. But it's, this is not a, an issue for DPW directly. Well, no, the time is constructed. But the selectmen have the time to do... We do all the warrant articles if they wish. The reason I ask that, if they're willing to do that on Monday, maybe we hold off on this one. Because here's the, here's the other thing. How do you guys it. feel about that suggestion? Well, uh, I think it's probably the best bet. Yeah. We're all agreeing with that? Yeah, but can I just make one Don't more argue when we're agreeing with you. No, no, I don't. Think, but I want to make another comment <laughs> okay. to Regina's great point. <laughs> Earlier on on the, the turnout gear, you're absolutely right. And we voted unanimously to use the unassigned fund balance for that. Because my, my hope is when it comes to life saving, that's an absolute reason. But in fairness, and even though I don't like this, 
what in, in fairness to Jen and Chris, to Mike's great point, I'd be willing to support this if we separated it out, because I think Mike, Mr. Pluff, in his years' experience, brings up valid points, and it's just like either have it all or none. So if, the, if you're willing to bring this Monday night, we're meeting Wednesday with the, the school anyway, and Thursday for final review. We still have time. I'd be willing to look at that more the if, that's the, if that's the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that um, there seems to be an agreement on that. I'd have to respectfully disagree. There's a I'll question. tell you why. Uh, Chris, um, what, what we're doing is sending a message to the selectmen to maybe reconsider slipping out. They can Just decide consider. to do so or not do so, and we'll deal with whatever their decision is. Okay. Uh, there's also the issue that's been raised on by a number of members about the use of the unassigned fund balance. Uh, whether it's appropriate in this case. I mean, there is no hard criteria on that. No. My own criteria that I use mm -hmm. is it's mm -hmm. absolutely, we got to have mm -hmm. it. Some really bad stuff's going to happen if we don't. That's why I said. I don't see that in this. I do in the firefighters. I do. Protective gear, for Yeah, example, I agree with you. I'm saying, yeah. But, you know, I don't see it in this. So I, I'm not real thrilled with it being in uh, the, being unassigned taken out of the, fund balance. Out of the unassigned fund balance. Um, or whatever you may want to call it, Regina. Yeah, the section. Uh, you could call it the excessive taxation fund, too. Can we at least bring it back, Monday, <laughs> to see? The now, now I, 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 I pulled you guys just now. Yeah. We can hold off on the vote on this to see if the selectmen reconsider this warrant article. That would be good. Yeah. How, are we still wanting, okay with doing that? I would like to do that. I would Double. like to do that. Okay. I have a question for Mike. Just the, yes, Mr. The, the DPW director was about to make a comment about what we discussed, and I'd like to hear his comment. We put together, starting a number of years ago, uh, I did the first couple <coughs> with Mr. Mr. Noyes, a CIP, and every year when we looked at it when it with respect to vehicles, because we had an aged fleet, it literally kept going up, 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 and up. I think the first year it started in the 300,000 range. If you look at the CIP, um, it's actually predicted uh, go to up to 480. We kind of set a goal that we were trying to keep the thing below about $300,000. So every year we postpone or push off some of these replacements. You're just kicking it to other people. We brought forth this year Vehicle purchases 243. We found a way to lease trucks so that we don't have this lump sum on the CIP. In other words, hit people with spikes. At 42, if you add them up, it's 285 under the 300,000. It's the same thing I did. We did last year. So by addressing these vehicles now, you are helping to keep within that CIP plan that we prepare, that the planning board adopts, and that I believe, well, a number of times have been charged with, it's in the CIP, you need to, Chris, you need to follow your CIP. We are following our CIP. That's it. Thank you. You know, uh, I've been on this committee six years, and I very rarely do I get even a peek at the CIP. Until you sent your email out the other day, I was like, eye-opening to me. Wow, finally. That's news to me. Cause yeah, it's, I, a, it's a reality. I mean, okay. we, oh, yeah. and, and, and I'm so I'm delighted to have all that information. Uh, thank you for that. It was really great to see all that information thank come you. at us. And I'll have some other questions on other one articles related to that. Uh, and I don't doubt the need um, for the one dump truck plow and wing. I'm a little questionable on the sidewalk, but generally I'm not really questioning that much. I'm uncomfortable with the unassigned fund balance, frankly. And I'm also, I'm sensitive to uh, what Mr. Pluff was saying about the sidewalk vehicles probably should be separate so they can be uh, separately decided by the voters. So I'm, I'm kind of sympathetic to that, but it's not a showstopper for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but the unassigned fund balance, you know, it violates my own individual assessment that yep. the unassigned fund balance should only be used for things we absolutely got to do. Yep. And this is not quite an absolute we got to do. I mean, we really do kind of need to do it, but it's not like an absolute got to do, drop dead if you don't do it kind of thing. Um, if these vehicles, if there's much more uh, substantial cost in these particular vehicles, I will not be replacing them, and, and I will deadline them. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that affects service. Exactly. All that affects and, and the voters right. choose right. when the when the one article stands on its own with a tax impact and the voters say no, mm -hmm. then they, they have uh, they should have the benefit of experiencing that new service level that brings. Okay? Yep. It shouldn't be telling the voters, well, for your own good, we're gonna tell you it's like no tax impact, so go ahead and vote for this kind of thing. Understood. That's not what I tell anyone. I know. Just I know. You, no, okay. you're, you're not telling that. But as Mr. Moore pointed out the other day, not having experience prior to coming on the budget committee, when he saw no tax impact, his basic interpretation was a common one, I think, which was, well, it's free money. <coughs> yep, that's you what know, I thought. And I think that's that's a that's a. There is no free it's money. It's not necessarily an intention of deception, but it is deceiving to many voters, I believe. And I believe Mr. Moore was using himself as an example of that. And I, I think that uh, if I went back in time, I probably was the see or under that deception many, many years ago. But we all get educated as we grow, of course. Right, Mr. LeBranch. So that I can understand this correctly, the <coughs> we're asking the selectmen to do something. First of all, they may say, we're not doing anything. Right. Fine. Right. Right. So then we're just back looking at the same thing. Or they're going to take the, the three trucks and put that in one more article and the same funding, the unassigned fund balance, and then we're going to have another Warren article that's going to have two sidewalk maintenance vehicles with the same uh, funding coming from the unassigned fund balance. So no, we're just going to no, have that's, that's two question. different... That's question, the unassigned fund balance as well. We're just going to have two different, but essentially the same thing that we're looking at here. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Is that what we're asking? Yeah. Are you driving to a point that Point of clarification. Now? They're asking Mr. the board of selectmen to... Uh, are you driving the point well, that we should I, vote now? I was ready to vote on this I'm tonight. ready to vote, too. Okay. I'm ready to vote. So you're objecting to delaying on the vote? Oh, yeah. Okay, Absolutely. then we will vote. No, no, it's a, it's no, a majority thing. To delaying it too. We, we, can, we can vote on you the matter can. and still request the selectmen to reconsider. I, I would be comfortable with that. Can I? Mr. Weber. Point of uh, preference. Um, we have heard many years how we respect the opinions of people who have been on boards a long time. And I don't say this lightly. The vice chairman has been on numerous boards in this town for over 38 years. He has asked that we wait until Monday so that our selectmen's rep, much like I asked our school board rep to do, our selectmen's rep from the budget committee would go back to the board to see if they would make any changes. Because the bigger issue is combined with what our chairman said. There's little faith in the voters if we're continuing to go down the unassigned fund balance. And that's the real issue. There's no faith, so let's just do it and say there's no tax impact. So that's a whole other issue. But I feel, I know where Mike's going to because it used to be the philosophy, and Stephen, you remember on the floor of the old 1996 when we got up and you and I and spoke in favor of Highland Avenue taken right out of the budget. One time only cost to fix that road, and we did it. The voters have a right to see. And I think what Mike is saying with all these Warren articles, Let's digest it. Let's have the voters look at things. Whether Chris and, and Jen, I know what they're talking about, they're looking at the total package, and I understand. But we have, a, as a budget committee, really are looking at trying to help everyone. But our question, we would like to have Regina bring it back. And it may not change, Stephen. You're absolutely right. But I would feel better at least them knowing the, the uh, concept that we're arriving at, that and the unassigned fund balance. And who knows? They may talk about that, too. But I, I would feel more comfortable. And if it doesn't change, then we vote Thursday night anyway at the final review a week from tonight. Uh, and we address the chairman's point as my point as well. It's not an absolute emergency for the unassigned fund balance. But I'm not. And if I'm all voted and they vote tonight, fine. But I'm not ready to vote tonight. Well, what I'm suggesting is that we can vote tonight. And we can vote again next Wednesday night. <coughs> based on the selectmen having changed or not changed. Uh, there apparently is some members that wish to vote tonight. I see no reason not to vote tonight, if, especially since these members agreed to also send the request to the Board of Selectmen to reconsider the use of the unsigned fund balance and to reconsider splitting this into two warrant articles, as described. Is that, is that 
a fair reflection of the body's desire. Mr. Branch. Just one more point, Tim, uh, Mr. Chair. You said, essentially, in your opinion, uh, it, it didn't feel as if these were absolutely necessary. But of course, you're not the DPW director, and you're not down there driving these vehicles. These are, and I, so you're, you have that opinion. I have, I'm of the opinion that this is an absolute must have. These, this equipment has to be. The funding mechanism. I, I, I know, the funding is one thing, Brian, but it seems to me that they're the ones, and, and I watched the presentation. Steven, well, you talk I get, about a I get your out. point. I get okay. your point. They're the experts, and I'm not. They should have my and vote. I shouldn't have my well, vote. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> but the question on the table, Stephen, is whether or not we're going to vote now and simultaneously request the selectmen to look at the two factors that sounds I just good. outlined. Is that sounds what the body me. wishes to do? I'm fine with that. Okay. So, Mr. LeBranche is making a motion to recommend this warrant article we already, uh, and request the selectmen to reconsider splitting this into two warrants, two articles rather, and reconsider the use of the unassigned fund balance. So, we're do I have a second? You had Frank originally. Are you gonna, are you gonna be my second again? I'll be a second. Okay. There you go. Oh, there we go. So we're ready to vote. All those in favor of Mr. LeBranche's wonderful motion. We have Mr. LeBranch, Ms. Barnes, Ms. Ladd, and Mr. Frank, that be four. And those opposed? Uh, that would be the other four. Got that, Barbara? Um, Mr. LeBranch, Ms. Barnes, Mr. Ladd, and the other in favor? Aye. 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 Frank. Frank. So it's a 4 4 vote at the moment. But subject to change because we're going to re vote on it again. So not, not a big deal. <coughs> 